Well, good morning and welcome to Christ the King. It's great to have you all here today, whether you're joining us in person or online. Um, our service this morning is participatory. Everything you're going to need can be found in the worship booklet that you were given when you came in. So we want to invite everyone to join in with singing the songs and responding with all the text in bold. Uh, our service begins with an opening song of praise as our ministers process in. So please stand and let us sing together our opening song. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Oh, no. 
In tenderness he sought me. this world may be so peaceably ordered by your providence that your church may joyfully serve you in quiet confidence and godly peace through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. almighty God giver of every good gift look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese that we may receive a faithful pastor who will preach the gospel, care for your people, equip us for ministry, and lead us forth in fulfillment of the Great Commission. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. First lesson today is a reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, 
did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me some of the fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go in dust. You shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all of the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called the wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 130 by responding with the text in bold. Out of the deep have I called unto you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who could abide it? For there is mercy with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my trust. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. 
for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the Lord, I'm sorry, for the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The word of the Lord. Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons, he cast out the demon, and he called them to him, and he said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemes they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Heavenly and gracious Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to worship and praise you today. We pray that your message will flow through Father Eric, and Father, we will hear every word and everything that you have for us today, and that we'll put this to your service. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Saul of Tarsus led a pretty charmed life. Now, as a Roman citizen, he enjoyed all of the rights and protections of his valuable birthright. 
And as a Jewish Pharisee schooled under the great rabbi Gamaliel, he held a position of power and prestige among his own people. And while life in the first century was never particularly easy, certainly not by our standards, Saul's future appeared to be stable and secure. His plan was to be a man of importance, a man respected by all those around him, both Romans and Jews alike. But have you ever noticed that God doesn't particularly care much for our plans? <laughs> and he certainly made that clear to Saul one day on the road to Damascus. It was there that the risen Jesus appeared to him and Saul's life would never be the same again. He would go on to be known as the Apostle Paul, and the remainder of his life would really be a litany of hardship and struggle as he lived into God's call for him to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. Now in 2 Corinthians 11, so a few chapters after where we read today, Paul gives us a short but somewhat graphic summary of what his life had been like since meeting Jesus on that Damascus road. He says, everything's been great, been really healthy, super comfortable. No, actually, he says, five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure." really doesn't sound like a good time. I don't care who you are. <laughs> so why on earth would Paul continue to do it? Why not just throw in the towel and go back to his old comfortable life? Well, Paul answers that question for us in our reading from 2 Corinthians this morning. Our lesson begins with Paul telling us, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak. Now this quote actually comes from Psalm 116 verse 10, but to understand what Paul's trying to say, as is often the case in scripture, we need to look at the entirety of of the psalm that he's quoting. It's a psalm of thanksgiving after the writer has been delivered from a grave illness. And this thanksgiving is expressed through the writer's trust in God. And as a result, the writer cannot remain silent about what the Lord has done for him. And Paul is saying essentially the same thing. Now, from the perspective of the Corinthians and really even from our own modern perspective, this might seem really strange. In Paul's day, things like suffering and hardship, they were typically seen as signs that God had not blessed an individual or that person's family. And even today, the modern prosperity gospel teaches us that if our faith is strong enough, then we will have things like health, wealth, worldly success, and material blessing from God. Now, if this is the case, then Paul, by contrast, must be the most cursed person on the face of the earth. And that may very well have been what the Corinthians were thinking, but Paul is turning this whole perception on its head. He's telling them that God's blessing does not mean that he removes pain and hardship from our lives. Instead, God's blessing happens when he delivers us through those things. And if this 
is truly the case, then Paul has been blessed abundantly indeed. And he cannot help but to speak about that abundant blessing in his life. However, this blessing is about more than just being delivered from trials and despair in the here and now. Paul is really playing the long game here. In verse 14, he says that we speak knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Now, for Paul, it isn't about living your best life now, but rather it's about preparing for your future in God's consummated kingdom. It can be really easy for us to think that Paul is talking about going to heaven, but that's really not what he's talking about. He's talking about literal, physical, bodily resurrection. He's talking about the end of the age when Jesus returns to earth and the dead are physically raised just as Jesus himself was physically raised from the dead. At this time, the heavens and the earth will be joined together into a new reality that is both physical and spiritual and God will once again dwell with his people just as he did in the Garden of Eden before our first lesson today. Now, Paul is saying that while we may have to endure suffering now, this resurrected glory is what awaits us. He continues in verse 15 by saying, For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. In other words, Paul is not suffering just for his own sake, but he's suffering so that one day the Corinthians may with him experience the joy of the resurrection. He's suffering so that they might glorify God themselves as they await their own resurrection with patient endurance. As I meditated on all of this this past week, I was reminded the summer of 1982. At that point, I was living in West Virginia, and my twin brother and I were infatuated with this new country band called Alabama. (laughs) Their, Their album, Mountain Music, had been released that February, and their popularity had skyrocketed. So when we found out that they were coming to play at the West Virginia State Fair, my brother and I begged our parents for tickets. Now, this, of course, was long before the days of Ticketmaster or online ticket brokers. And so on our ninth birthday, our mother took us down to the fairgrounds, and we waited in line for tickets. Remember those days? It was a long line, and it was a hot day, but... Mark and I endured it happily for the future glory of that concert. And so did our mom. She didn't even want to go to the concert. She had no desire to watch a bunch of bearded hillbillies play loud, twangy guitars in front of thousands of screaming fans. But she endured that line also. Not for her sake, but for ours. Paul is telling the Corinthians, this wayward and sometimes infuriating group of believers, that everything that he has suffered personally, he has done not for himself, but for them, so that they might be able to one day share with him in the resurrection of Jesus. And Paul concludes this section of his letter by saying, so we Do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. 
Now, Paul has not suddenly become a dualist here. He's not talking about the physical world versus the spiritual world, but rather he's talking about present realities versus future glory. He recognizes that life is difficult. And as Christians, we are going to experience trials and suffering. But it will all be worth it in the end when Jesus returns and makes all things new. Waiting all day in that line on that hot June day was not fun. And it certainly wasn't easy. And we certainly wouldn't have waited that long in that line for tickets to a sixth grade band concert. But we knew that that Alabama concert was going to be amazing. And so anytime we got discouraged or thought about just going home, we just focused on why we were in that line in the first place. The glory of the future more than compensated for the drudgery of the present. One of the things that we always have to remember when we read Scripture, and specifically Paul's letters, is that <clears throat> these letters were written to specific people at a particular time who were dealing with their own set of issues that Paul is addressing. Despite what some people might claim, Paul was not actually writing directly to 21st century Americans. And yet, human nature is human nature. And it's pretty easy to look at the church of 2,000 years ago and realize that we are still dealing with a lot of the same issues and the same problems today. And our reading this morning is a great example. When we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 as a whole, we see that part of what Paul is doing is he's contrasting the ways of the world that we are now in and the ways of God's kingdom. Now, the world tells us that comfort and security in this lifetime should be pursued by us at all costs. You go out, you make your money, you get your nice house, you become an important person. This, after all, is what success looks like. I mean, it is literally the American dream. Unfortunately, the modern church so easily plays into this mentality. We are inundated with books and sermons about how we can unlock God's blessing in our lives or how we can unleash God's favor upon us with these simple steps. The overall message that we often hear is that God's blessing means our comfort. Right here, right now. And while that sounds great, it's not biblical. Now, don't, go, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that we should seek out suffering for suffering's sake. Suffering usually does a good enough job seeking us out. But I truly believe that when we follow God's law, we're able to avoid a lot of pitfalls in life but we're never going to avoid all of them. When we start believing, though, that our comfort is the direct result of God's favor and blessing upon us, we've really missed the boat. Like Paul, we are called to play the long game. And that can sometimes mean present suffering for the sake of the gospel. Now, of course, this can take many different forms for different people. Now, for some of us, this suffering takes the form of a call to Christian ministry. I can tell you from firsthand experience that a life of service in the church is anything but comfortable. And it can take an immense toll not only on the individual, but on the family as well. And I will readily admit that I often feel pangs of jealousy when I look at the worldly successes of my friends and my siblings who live in big houses and drive fancy cars and go on luxurious vacations, those things are a regular reminder 
of the things that I gave up for the sake of a life of service. But we're not all called to full-time ministry. For others, suffering for the gospel may involve standing firmly but lovingly for your Christian faith. Recently, Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker has come under a bit of fire for expressing his Christian faith during a commencement speech at a private Catholic university. And many in the secular world have called for him to be fired from his job for holding such beliefs. In a world where public perception is everything, Butker has actually refused to capitulate, standing firmly in his Catholic faith. And I firmly believe that he would rather be fired and banned from the NFL than recant his faith in Christ. And while we're not all full-time pastors or champion athletes, it's safe to say that we all in some way experience pain and suffering in our lives. And I look out upon you guys, and I know you guys, and I know that there's suffering that we've all endured. But for some of us, it's broken relationships. For others, it's mental illness. We have financial struggles and health issues. And while the rest of the world seeks a blessing that will remove suffering from our lives, we are called to pursue the blessing that often comes through suffering or even in the midst of suffering. We are called to surrender our suffering to the Lord so that he might use it for his glory and for the good of the world. I know a man who's an inmate at Donovan State Prison, and he will readily admit that he is not there for the good things that he has done in his life. Every second of every day is a reminder to him of his own sinful and fallen nature and the evil decisions that he has made. And as a young man, he never would have imagined that he would find himself incarcerated for over a decade of his life. And yet, even in the midst of sin and suffering and a terribly fallen world, he is seeking God's glory. He leads a Bible study in the prison, and he has helped to bring countless numbers of men to a saving faith in Jesus Christ. And he serves as a kind of de facto chaplain on the yard. His eyes are not on his own suffering, but rather on the future glory of God's kingdom. And he wants to make sure that every man in that prison knows not only what God has done for him, but what God can do for them as well. He believed, and so he spoke. My friends, let this be our example as well. Allow the Lord to work in the midst of your suffering, and then speak that truth to everyone you know. The things of this current world are transient. Let us live for those future things that are eternal. Thanks be to God. Amen. Continuing on page 7 of your worship booklet, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. God. from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. I will pause after each bidding, and you may add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Keith, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. In our San Diego Anglican Deanery, we remember today the people of Branches of the Cross Vista and their rector, the Reverend Gabe Garcia, and Holy Spirit La Mesa, and their rector, the Reverend Dr. Brian Hughes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Reverend Jessica, Russ and Heidi, David and Mary Beth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, and Steve, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the abundant blessings of this life, we thank you, O oh Lord. We remember especially those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries this week. Please add your own thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, for those who travel this week, that they might be protected from every danger. For the diocesan transition team. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who do not believe in Christ, that the Holy Spirit may enlighten them through the gospel and bring them into the way of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Today, we pray especially for Anley, Bella, Bob, Capri, Emery and Sue, Jeff, Jeremy, John D., JP, Laura Lee, Leisha, Linda, Ron, Sabrina, Sebastian, Wally, Larry, and Father Larry. Please add the names of anyone you wish to pray for today. Grandma Rose. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who have departed this life in certain hope of the resurrection 
In thanksgiving, let us pray. Please name any who have died that you wish to remember today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. And hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. You may be seated. Well, good morning and welcome to Christ the King. It's so good to have everyone here today. If you are new or visiting with us today uh, and you'd like to know more information about who we are and what we do, we've got some connect cards in the pews. You can fill one of these out and hand it to me on your way out and we will be in touch with you. Um, as a little extra incentive, we have some wonderful coffee mugs. If you turn in your Connect card, you get a free coffee mug, nice and big for your morning cup of coffee or your evening cup of ice cream, unless you're Glenn, and then you need a bowl like that. But we're not giving away any bowls. <laughs> uh, if you're watching us online, you can fill out a Connect card by simply clicking on the link below the video, or anyone can scan the QR code on the back of the worship booklet and just fill it out right there on your phone. Um, in a few minutes, our usher is going to bring forward bread and wine to be used for Holy Communion, and then we will do a collection of our financial offerings for the church. If you are visiting with us today, please do not feel obligated to contribute. We simply want you to enjoy the worship and the fellowship this morning. And now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated until your row is invited to come forward to receive. All baptized Christians who come to faith and repentance in Jesus Christ are invited to receive Holy Communion this morning. If this does not describe you, we invite you to come forward with your arms crossed over your chest and receive a blessing from the priest. For those receiving communion, you will be offered the bread first and then the wine. You may dip the bread into the wine before consuming it, or you may drink directly from the cup after first consuming the bread. Because we worship a God who hears and heals, there will be prayer ministers available outside the side door to offer prayers of healing and guidance for you or on behalf of someone else.
Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be upon, be upon you, you and remain, remain with you always. always. Amen. You may be seated. It's still there. Hi, my name is Leah. I'm part of your vestry, which is the governing board of our church. And I would like to call your attention to which page? Where did it go? I lost it. I was ready, and I'm not ready. Page 21, the last, last two pages. Um, we only have one thing coming up, which is soaking prayer, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Ooh, what, Sue? <laughs> um, it's on Saturday, June 15th at 7 p.m., and it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to, to refresh, to spend time with God. Um, you don't have to do anything. Just be comfortable and, and soak in his presence. Uh, I also wanted to kind of mention, I don't know if you have been utilizing our website as well as you should, but we have lots of resources, and one of those is um, our Sunday music. You can actually watch videos and, and know what we're going to be singing for that week, and if you just go to the worship tab and then click on Sunday music, you can listen to it, and so you can be prepared and really sing out with us. And we did have a wonderful uh, game day social and barbecue yesterday. If you missed it, we're going to have another one coming up, so I don't want you to miss that one. That's it.
All right, so we want to invite everyone to join us for refreshments following the service. One of our traditions is we like to ask God's blessing upon the food that we're going to receive. So we have the bucket of blessings. You just draw one out and read the blessings. So who would like to ask God's blessing? Abigail. Now let us stand and sing our closing song. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.